Should we forgive those who have done wrong to us? If so, how? So, for those who have done wrong to you, it's already a history of the past who have done wrong to you. And I'm sure at this point you have the ability to um, discern and to, to defend yourself if that kind of wrong is still, still being imposed on you. I'm sure you have the ability to avoid it you have the ability to, 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 re, to reject it. So, but it's a history of the past that the wrong has been done to you. For example, your abusive childhood. Mm -hmm. Or for example, your husband has another affair outside, or your, or your wife, he, he has done this unfaithful deed on you. Um, so he has done all this wrong to you. Well, if he have done all this wrong to you, first of all, have you make sure that it won't be done to you again? Or have you make sure that you already are apart away from, from these kind of wrongs? Some people are intricate. Some people implicate themselves with this wrong, and because of their emotional attachment, they still allow the wrong to be done on them. For example, if, if the woman loves the husband so much, it does not matter how, how much adultery the husband has done, or is going to do, or is doing, he's still hang on, hanging there. Well, um, don't allow the wrong to be done to you uh, again. But if the wrong has been done to you, and you find ways to resolve it. Um, we just mentioned silent, exclu silent exclusion. You have tried your way to explain it, you have explained what you can, and it is, it is still he or she is doing the same thing, I think you have to walk away from it, or you have to demonstrate it by silence exclusion. Silence exclusion sometimes is very powerful. You know how Gandhi using silent meditation to, uh, to declare the independence of India, and he became successful in it? by peaceful, silent meditation, not by force against violence against violence. So forgiveness is the way to go. Because when, when someone has done something wrong to you, whenever you think of it, you're angry with it. You add anger on whatever has been done. Or you get depressed, you get depression for those wrongs that have been done to you. Or you have anxiety for the wrongs to be done to you again. So you could, because you still remember, you're still attached to the wrongs that have been done to you, you become depressed, you become fearful, you become, you, you have a lot of anxiety. And those are created by you, not by the wrongs again. So don't add emotion, emotions onto some wrongs that have been done to you. Forgive it. Don't even think about it. Discard the thought. When the thought of hatred comes up because of something wrong has been done to you, realize that thought coming up. Be mindful of that thought of depression coming up. Be mindful of that thought of anxiety coming up. Be mindful of that thought of fear coming up and not to continue with it. It's very difficult. First of all, do you realize the arising of the thought? Do you realize, oh, the thought of fear coming up, oh, the thought of depression coming up, oh, the thought of anxiety comes up. Are you mindful of the thought coming up? Most people are not mindful. They just get carried away by the thought. So if they could depress, it's, they just feel depressed. If they, if they have anxiety, they just feel anxiety. Fear, they just feel the fear. They don't know that, oh, how hold it. This is a, th a thought of fear coming up. I have identified myself with that thought. That thought is not me. I am not that thought. It's just a thought. Can you identify that? 
Are you that thought? That thought comes up in you, but you are not that thought. That thought of anger is not you. But you attach to it, that becomes you. If you don't attach to it, that is not you. If a thought of greediness comes up, a thought of jealousy comes up, you identify yourself with that thought. I am, I don't like that guy being better than me. I don't like that, that person, this, I'm jealous of that. You identify you yourself with that thought, you mix with that thought. How stupid is it? You're not that thought. When a thought comes up, try not to go with it. Why are you meditating? What's the purpose of meditation? The meditation is just to cross your leg and do this and do that and say, oh, the three A's of meditation, adjust your body, adjust your breath, adjust your mind, but you have done nothing. Why? Because you are carried away by your thought. You have all observed the three A's of adjustment. You cross your leg, straighten your back, you know, and you become absorbed with your focus on your breath and you try to focus on your breath, not thinking about something else, and then suddenly, a thought of hatred, depression comes up in you. You feel depressed. You keep on that thought, you feel depressed. You keep on that thought, you feel depressed. You have to learn how to detach from that thought. Don't let it continue. When the thought of anxiety comes up, don't let it continue. Stop to think about it. Don't let it continue. No second thought. No third thought. You have identified yourself with that thought continuously and you have been habitually doing it for all your life. Isn't it enough? That's enough. No more. Don't, don't be a fool. Don't fool yourself. You have to separate yourself from that thought because that thought is not you. Don't identify yourself with it. It's difficult. Why are we learning meditation? We must be mindful of every thought comes up. You know why you have to train yourself? My focus is in here, all of a sudden my focus is gone, I lose my breath focus, and then I thought, of, I thought about yesterday. My son called me, and he said a lot of things I don't like. He's not studying, he's, he, he got me crazy. I hated him, I supported him, but he's not listening to me. I hated it. All this hatred, all this thought comes up. You continue, you continue, you continue. Meditation is to watch it. You are like a mountain. When a cloud, a black cloud comes by, here comes the black cloud. I watched it. Oh, a, a black cloud come. Let it go, let it go, let it go. I don't get carried away with it. I don't go with it. I don't allow it to stay. I am not that thought. Can you do that? When a thought comes up of hatred because that person has done wrong to me, oh, I'm not going to allow that hatred to continue. I forgive it. Forgiveness is to let go of it. And if you can do it, other than forgiving, there's another method that you can do. Matter, compassion. Why did he do that to me? Because of all these causes coming up that led him to do this tragedy to me. And all these causes, am I responsible for those causes? Is it because somehow in previous life that I've done the same thing to him or to her, that's the reason why it recurs back to me? So maybe it's the result of what I have done and not what he has done. So I have to be responsible for it. Now, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to cultivate any bad causes that will lead to similar things like that. I want to be a volunteer. I want to give my, my, my love or com compassion to other unfortunate people. So I want to change my hatred into forgiveness and forgiveness into love, into compassion. Can you do that? Detachment, letting go of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But letting go is not that easy. You have to learn because you have so many things to let go. Because I have so many emotions. I have to let go of my anxiety, my fear. I have to let go of my jealousy. I have to let go of my hatred. I have to let go of many, many things that I have to let go. I want to buy a house. I desperately want to buy a house because that shows my status. 
I have worked up to 10 years, I haven't bought a house, I want a house, I want a house to show my status, to show that I'm good, you know, I want money. You have all that, those thoughts, one way or another, which can be classified into many, many emotional categories. And when it comes up, you have to let it go. But before letting it go, you have to strengthen yourself in watching the thought when it comes up. That's why what we're watching now, we're watching our breath. We train ourselves to watch our breath, and when watching the breath is so strong, when you train yourself so strong that you watch, you know every breath, then you know every thought that comes up. Good thought, bad thought, neutral thought. This is just a tool, not an end. This is just a tool to train you. It's just like when you, make, when you run in the marathon, you have to train yourself in your diet, in how you run, in how you breathe, everything. You have to train yourself in such a way that you're well equipped not to attach. You have to well equipped to let go. Sometimes you can simply can, you can let go of the love. Oh, that guy has done an unfaithful act, but somehow I still love him or I still love her, then your love is all intricated into not letting go and um, so you have to change it to forgiveness and compassion. There's so much to talk about in, in this. So if so, how you contemplate when a thought comes up that you, you're angry about the wrong that's been done to you, I forgive forgiveness. And um, one way to do it is you visualize the Bodhisattva of compassion shining light on you from the third eye shining light on you that light of compassion shine on you and at the same time shine on the person whom you hate and then you also have a light inter intercommunicated light, light in between the two and you are rendering compassion to him the, the light of forgiveness so the light is shining on you to give you the power and the power gives you the light of compassion Forgiveness and you will forgive whatever has been done to you. So you, 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 you contemplate by images that you are shining out light of compassion. Because it's easier to think if you think in terms of form, to think in terms of, in terms of images. So the image is you are radiating light of compassion and forgiveness onto that person. Because when you think of that person, you hated him or her. But now, it's no more hatred. You smile. You contemplate yourself smiling, and you said, I forgive you. No more hatred. No more anger. That's all forgiven. This forgiveness has a power in it. Okay? So that's how you do it. You use contemplation and visualization. If you have someone that you live with that you cannot let go of her or him, you know what you should do? You should contemplate on, I'll be talking to him and I'll explain it to him or her that the best way to end this relationship is this way. Or this will, the kind of relationship will lead nowhere and the other relationship will lead to something more useful more merciful, more compassionate, more meaningful, and it will be good for both parties, and we should let go of the love, we should let go of the hatred, we should let go of all those one-sided views. You know, you have to think about compassion. Next question, do you have retreats? Yes, we have, but it's for the bhikshus and the bhikshunis. In the future, we will have more. But in sometime in October, we have a seven-day retreat for those who want to, be, to have temporary ordination, to, to become a monk in seven days, for seven days, a month or a nun. But because of time limitation, we can only give it in Chinese, and you may not be able to understand the Chinese language. In the future, if we have more Caucasian members joining, then we do an English version group. But don't have, we don't have enough Caucasian members. We have 60 people flying all the way from Hong Kong to come here to do a retreat. And uh, they enjoy here. 
they enjoy the environment here, they enjoy you know, the weather, and they enjoy the tranquility, and they would come. They, they already have applied vacations from the from their job site, from the work site, and they have 60 people who are coming here to do a retreat in October and become a monk or a nun or a layman for seven days. And it's conducted in Chinese. We don't have enough Caucasian members to organize an English version retreat. Unless you give me a list to say, we have 30 people in here, and they're all, they're all conscientious, then we can, we can organize it for you. It's not that we don't want to organize it, but, but you don't have enough people to do a retreat. And sometimes people talk about it. I have experiences that people say, how come you don't have any English retreat? How come you don't have any uh, English uh, meditation and Dharma talk? But when we organize it, we couldn't find them. They didn't come. They just talk about it. They never participate in it. They just talk and talk and talk without participation. And also, they don't, they don't come in to help. They just come in to enjoy it. They come to enjoy the food, you know, the surrounding, and they just say, oh, can you help in to cook? No, 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 I don't, know, I don't know how to cook. Can you clean? Can you be a volunteer to clean up the beddings? To clean up, to, to do more washing, the toilet and all that. No, no, no. I come here to retreat. I don't come here to be a laborer. I don't, want, I don't come here to, to clean your wash, to clean the public washroom. You know. So the way we train our monks and nuns sometimes is to clean public washrooms. And we have a, a, a monk in here who cleaned nine months in the public washroom. He's probably meditating. He didn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he spent nine months in cleaning the public washroom. Next, why do I dream during sleep? Why do I dream more the more I meditate? Uh, I don't know. Maybe now that you meditate, you find you have more dreams. Maybe... Uh, one month from now, you're not meditating, you may have more dreams too. Sometimes you cannot tie, There's, there is no correlations between dreams and meditation. I haven't, I haven't read and I haven't heard of uh, a survey group or scientific re research of a, a correlation between dream and meditation. I haven't. So I don't know why you have more dreams the more you meditate. Uh, and also dreams and meditation, the correlation is different, different people. Some people tell me, since I meditate, I don't have any dream. But you say, since I meditate, I have a lot of dreams. So I don't know who is, <laughs> you know, wh why. Everyone is different. Everyone's brain is different. Don't be so superstitious about dream. The dream is so multifaceted, so incredible, so unimaginable. It beats the wildest imagination in dream. And don't try to, to relate your dream to what? To, your, to a prediction of the future. You may be wrong. And if you're wrong or right, so it's just chances, probability, the chances that it's wrong could be right. So why are you always believing a dream? But I can tell you there's a, there's a, a saying by, by um, senior monks in China. Uh, the wise person has very less, not many dreams. We are in a big dream right now at this moment. You and I, our life is nothing but a dream. What's the definition of a dream? Impermanent fleeting, insubstantial, fake, not true. Isn't life contain all those elements? Isn't life impermanent? Isn't life change, changing all the time? We are in a big dream. What's the meaning of Buddha? The awakened one. The Buddha never said, I am God. 
I'm the creator. The Buddha only said, I have awakened from the dream. And I'm going to tell you how to be awakened from the dream. When you are awakened from a dream, you know what I mean. Then you're out of samsara. We are all in a dream. Do you believe that we are all in a dream? Because our life contains the elements of a dream. It's not true. It's short. Like life is changing. It has the wildest imagination. All those who have done. Isn't all, all, all we have done, you know, has the wildest imaginations and possibilities in it. So I don't know how you can correlate dream with meditation. <laughs>